Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Canaluminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. Welcome to Breeder Syndicate. I'm Matthew here today with Seed Trip Rob, aka Sub Rob, as I knew him when I first started talking to him. Um, we're going to cover some stuff that we didn't cover last time, maybe expand on a few things that we, we kind of felt like we should go more in depth on. And uh, I think we're going to start it off today talking about San Diego's finest cuts. I mean, we, we briefly mentioned how influential it, it was at the time and, and still is today, but that was more as a from the uh, purview of my own. But as the scene as a whole, that thing took on a life of its own. So let's start off, start off with what year did that kind of start forming? Um, why was there three, et cetera? Let's start there. I, got, I mean, it would be easy to look up, but I want to say around 2008, mm -hmm. a couple of years after I signed up on the mag. Maybe 2009. Nah, it was. It had to be 2008. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was. It was formed to showcase and inform on the cuts that G was bringing into that Ape was bringing into San Diego and pretty much the rest of California, running back and forth, north and south. Uh, it was started by Dragor and the okay. I. And uh, a lot of the San Diego cats saw the title and signed right up. Yep. Or heard a buddy of theirs and signed up on IC Mag just to keep an eye on the thread. Because, uh, like I said, we, we, you know, we had a running list of what G was was bending at the time. That's so it was, right. It was, it was a badass thread right from the start, and it, it evolved from there into uh, into general all around everything threat but the theme was mostly cuts we were running in san diego and we were all on that trip you know free the genetics at the time so you know people were always bringing new stuff in and it just became inevitable that people would start spreading the genes and it didn't hurt g's business at all nah no he he, he actually sold clones fairly affordably even back then like you, you weren't having the $500 cut for this and 800 for that. Ridiculous. Yeah. The Raiders won. <laughs> how, how did the draft go, by the way? I went well. Uh, it was unexpected, but uh, the Raiders got a lot of the depth they needed to be able to compete. And uh, it's going to be... It's going to be a fun season, if nothing else. AP is a coach. Shit. Max, get the fuck out of here. And now we got, well, I won't go into it. That's not the show. <laughs> One thing I can talk as much about as cannabis, it's the rape. Yeah, it's like me with the MMA and, and shit like that. That's an obsession. I guess I can talk about just about it. Yeah. <laughs> Anything where man men get a hold of each other and... and and hold each other. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. So yeah, again, I want to I want to stress that, like, you know, I, I don't think Ape gets brought up a lot, but he was such a major influence on even uh, shit that I did, shit that you did, the the entire, how the scene blew up. The entire state, you know, even the big yeah. guys in the and up north in the triangle they had access to all kinds of stuff that other people didn't of course but sometimes they wanted something that they saw yeah. and and they were able to get it to them yeah it was, it was a lot there was a lot of difference between what was going on up there versus down in socal despite you know like some of the the stuff that was sold at harborside would come down here but there was still quite a big divide between what we were growing you weren't seeing a lot of like bull rider and hog's breath way up north being blown up in mass you know it was quite Perfect. different 
huge in Southern California. I mean, it was it was big, but they didn't. It's not part of the family tree of the Southern California right. growing. It was in Northern California, especially the Bay. Like everybody knows, the Bay was was purple crazy. Oh Back yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could start with one of those Granddaddy Purple. When did you first see it? When did it hit the scene down there? You know, I, I might have gotten that from from a. Um, I don't remember. Maybe Sean or one of the other guys might remember, but it wasn't the. It wasn't one of the two main GDP cuts. Yeah. Uh, Son of Bog later known as Great Punch, uh, yeah. let me know that he thought that the cut that I had, because it was small, man. It grew like freaking Bubba. It grew yeah. Bubba with slightly smaller nuts. I'm talking about that cut of Bubba, the one that just yeah, yeah. stayed small. Uh, it took forever to get there. Uh was not a yielder, but uh, I guess it resembled a cut that was known to some people as the Royale. Oh, interesting. Uh, and that information came from, I guess, Colorado, wherever, wherever Great Punch was based. Yeah. That was the first time I'd ever heard of the Royale cut. Yeah, I, I'd never heard of it, but yeah, it, it was different though, for sure. I remember seeing pictures of like Ken's GDP being all like perped out and like. Like me, like magenta purple, and uh, the one down in San Diego didn't look anything like that. I do remember no. the slow growth a lot. It was uh, more cushy. It was more yeah. more potent than the other two GDPs that I grew in San Diego, which I was not. I was not necessarily that big of a fan of uh, GDP. The purples I usually like are those old school purple stinky. Incense, Afghani, Pakistan, yeah. um, not the fruit purple. Yeah, I like you, that. I always took you for a fruity guy, dude. That surprises me. <laughs> I guess that's how I come across. How, how did the grape ape compare that went around San Diego yeah. to the GDP? The kind of grape ape I had uh, sucked. I remember specifically being very disappointed in that. I, you know, while mislabeled cuts weren't as common back then yeah. as they are just because of sheer volume, I can't say for sure that that was the great bait that, uh, you know, that made Big Book of Buds or, or the Can of Bible or whichever one it was yeah. that had been in it. It was one of those purple strains that doesn't turn all the way purple. It's got like purple streaks through it. Yeah. It had a very odd, this is how disappointed I was in that I remember these details. Plus I've been strumming through the forums, uh, refreshing, and I, I saw a couple pics of it. And, and what wasn't purple almost looked like uh, it had a, a goldish tint to it. Like when you pull out some six or eight month cured buds yeah. and they had a golden look to it. Not not to the point of you know falling apart yet where where you like it. Yeah. Um, but it just uh it wasn't it wasn't something that I ever grew a second time. Yeah. Yeah it makes sense. The so, SR seventy one yeah. that went around Diego was definitely rungs on the ladder above great bait i remember going a huge fan of that either but it was, it was okay. i remember growing urkel at the same time as the sr71 and i could never tell them apart sometimes i would i would be like well this one's a little more hashy smelling or tasting as opposed to full grape but that was like the only difference i noticed sr71 grew a little bit faster but not much but i remember them looking almost identical you know, well, I hesitate. I'm a little more hesitant now to say I never grew so and so because as I've gone back to the forums to kind of get ideas for what we should talk about, I'm finding a whole lot of stuff that I I completely forgot I grew. <laughs> uh, I don't believe I ever grew Urkel. 
I do remember smoking, uh, smoking it for a while because one of the things we did on the thread was after we had met, you know, each other mm-hmm. and got everybody had gotten to know each other. <clears throat> if one person, you know, was going to grow a couple pounds of one thing, then everybody else would focus on something else and just get samples from the other growers. Yeah. Uh, getting purple urkel from Sean. Maybe grow tech. I think he grew that too. So yeah. I, I put it down for a grapey, for a grapey, uh, purple cut. That was, that was pretty. That one always fucked me up and made me, I don't know. I, I never liked the high from it, but it always smelled really good and tasted really good. So I'd always smoke it and end up regretting it because it would spin me out like in a real weird direction. Now, I don't remember, like I said, I, I don't remember how much we went into Bull Rider other than the um, just little bits of the story where the dude from, um, I want to say Fresno is where it came from and it came down with old Betsy. But other than that, uh, trying to figure out much about the story of Bull Rider was, was a little hard. But there was the Afghani Bull Rider that was big down in San Diego. Um, can you touch on that a little bit? Well, we have Bull Rider, which is huge, and Gerbo from Dago. Yeah, yeah. Gerbo recently, I saw on Instagram, maybe it was an Instagram story or maybe it was a post and it's still there. Uh, he, he posted a, a small short uh, some nation of where it came from to the best of his knowledge and the fact that the guy was a bull rider mm-hmm. and that's why it came from there. The Afghani bull rider that was going around uh, it was popular to grow, I would assume, because maybe maybe it was a yielder, yeah. uh, maybe a space saver, you know, uh, maybe the Afghani shortened it down. I was never as big a fan. That was the weed that no matter where you were drinking at in North County, somebody at the bar, off to the side of the bar, always had a little bit of Afghani bull rider. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was grown. It was grown by a lot of people who probably all the people who wanted to grow bull rider and couldn't get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, was that via Jeff Tech first? Do you remember? I, I know that Jeff Tech was in that original crew. Yeah. Or, or ancillary to it, you know, one degree at the most yeah. separate. Um, I don't know if he's the one who found it. I heard that he grabbed it from somebody else who was in the in the crew and growing it in his backyard. Okay. Uh, Sean would be a good guy to ask about the history of that. Yeah, yeah, it would. There there was another seed that got popped by Brandon Rust uh, that's made of Afghani Bull Rider in the last couple of years. It's made its way out to uh, a couple of people in California, among them Sean, who's been posting pics recently. Uh, and it looks better. Uh, Sean says it's better hands down, and he's still running it. So that, yeah. that's whether or not it's good smoke. But you'd have to go there for details. Maybe I should have hit him up about that before I came on the show. I mean, um, I, I met that kid, I want to say four years ago now, and he showed up in my when I used to do the Instagram live streams, the Rust Kid. And he, he first he came on claiming that he bred Bull Rider. And then I was like, oh, yeah, which one? The Afghani bull rider or bull rider? He's like, what do you mean? And I said, there's there's not just one. You know, like he didn't even know that there there was something even called Afghani bull rider at the time. But later he then took credit for breeding it. So I've always been sus as fuck. So anytime his name comes up, I'm like, oh, that fucking clown. <laughs> well, I have to. I actually, I actually, well, I never met the guy. I don't know the guy. Um, and I heard... When, when I started following him, or, or I don't even know how I can't, maybe Sean pointed him out. It's probably yeah. something, any bull rider. I noticed that uh, sometimes you get into arguments about stuff that uh, is is from the past, like that. Yeah. Uh, but he seems like he knows what the fuck he's doing. He seems like a hard worker. Uh, hard hustler, for sure. Uh, he hustles the fuck out of people. And yeah, well, I have no, no I love for that it. motherfucker. Yeah. I, I don't know one way or the other. I don't mind talking shit on people. I just I, I know you I, don't. <laughs> uh, 
and the only reason I know who Jeff Tech was because I wasn't involved with the, you know, with those original yeah yeah transplant uh, in '99. Um, but I know of Jeff Tech because when when Bull Rider in Canada launched, they yeah, pretty much right. what they were about, and I hit up Sean. The local one of the local San Diego historians, and uh, and that's when I found out who Jeff Tech was and how he was connected up north. Is and, he a Canadian, uh, Jeff Tech? I don't know. He ended uh, up there. Yeah, he that's what I thought. Music producer. Somehow they they were in the same circle, hmm. and he was an Afghani bull rider from back in the day. That he still still have the cut, still growing it. Uh, and somehow turned it into a bull rider brand. The only thing I'm angry about now, because I reached out to Ovo, and uh, I, well, first thing I did was reached out to everybody I knew in San Diego, and we hit up the bull rider Instagram pages. And, yeah, and yeah. Said, hey, do you even know what you're just ripping off? Uh, to his credit, Ovo did reach out a few times, and just they never actually connected with Gerbo and him yeah. to discuss the history of the Bull Rider brand. I mean, if you look at the branding, it's the same brand that Gerbo designed originally for yeah. his clothing and accessories. It's the same logo. Yeah, exact. You know? Yeah. Ovo did reach out. So, you know, it's on, it's on Gerbo to reach back out. Gerbo's hard and, to get a hold of though sometimes. So I can see that. What's that? Jerbo's been hard to get a hold of sometimes, though, so I could see that being a task. I've talked to him a number of times, and he's just one of those strange cats. You know, he yeah. doesn't he doesn't really seem that concerned. So I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm going online here and blasting Bull Rider. If nobody's upset, then, hey, man, just, you know, show a little something about the history of Bull Rider and that it's not a, where are they at, Toronto? It's not a Toronto you know, culture. Yeah. It's a San Diego thing. Just acknowledge it and uh, fucking run with it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, as long as they don't touch P91, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. So let's get into Green Crack. When did you first see the crack? And, and when you saw it, was it called Green Kush with the C or was it called Green Crack first? Here you know, it was it was both when I saw it first. I can't remember where I saw it first, but I do remember smoking it and saying, "Wow, I would have." And this is not as insulting or as negative as it sounds. It was like I would have loved this shit in high school. You no, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The first blueberry was the first strain I ever had that was a tone specific, could be described as candy. Yeah. Uh, but green crack just had that overall sweetness that uh, it's, it's fucking delicious. And that was, and I was already online, and that was when, that's when people would have the debates. You know, there was the the cannabis grammar guys who, who insisted on calling it this or that and not weed because it had negative. So yes. it could versus green crack that that never that never bothered me yeah it never bothered me either but i saw a lot of it well i do understand some of that that old school you know speak about it correctly yeah you know i did that train of thought and where that that whole small movement started and i appreciated it you know if you were speaking to somebody educating them about cannabis or informing them about oh, sure then sure, call it cannabis. You know, if you're on a fucking weed forum, you know, call it <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So uh, that came around, uh, which you had asked if we'd covered green ice enough. Yeah, yeah. Green was uh, Cali Green. Uh, he crossed green ice to Gorilla uh, Gorilla Gold from Breeder Brad, and yeah. on the last. Cast it was Gorilla Gold number four. And when I was going through the forums, I found out it was Gorilla Gold number two. 
Okay. Uh, but that just made an almost perfect sweet cannabis strain. I, I mean, I don't think any of us gave it the credit when we had it. Well, I, as far as I know, Cali was the only one who ever grew it. Because, again, we were in that rush of strains for the first time ever where you could have 20 different cuts delivered to your house and smoke a joint with the dude. You yeah, know? right. Um, so, yeah, I, I didn't high and lonesome. Who, who's working with Green Crack? Oh, yeah, yeah, high and lonesome with the uh, Appalachia, for sure. I was putting out S1s when I was down in San Diego, and that pissed a lot of people off because everybody thought I was going to take their clones and S1 it. <laughs> well, you know, everybody was worried. Everybody's still worried. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, CSI gave me great advice a long time ago, and he said, don't ever tie yourself to one clone. Because if you do, someone's going to get it, and then you're going to be real sad about it, and you're not going to have anything left. So never worry about tying yourself to one clone. So I've always kind of gone with that, but um, yeah, I remember back then getting locked out of everything because because I was the dude making fem seeds down there, you know, and S1's a shit. Yeah, I wish I had appreciated the 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 value of S1 seeds uh, before I did because I passed a lot of S1 seeds in the community. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm taking them in. Uh, for a while, I was afraid of them, you know, like a lot of old schoolers. Oh, sure. You know? uh, and then I finally started messing with them. It's like, holy crap, I want an S1 every cut that I enjoy now. <laughs> Yeah, right. Fifteen years, twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. One. Bro, science damned everything, bro. <laughs> yeah, I okay. still have a friend in Alaska who take them and I see. He's like, no, dude, you know, you know, I don't mess with with that stuff. I'm like, dude, <laughs> get off the island once in a while, bro. <laughs> well, it just leaves it all for us. It's all right. Sure. A dub. Now is that is it just alien dog as a dub or do do we know what it is? Alien dog crossed with sour dog. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I love that shit. And do we know if that was um alien dog from Obsol or from Swindle? From Swerve? Ob it was from Ob yeah. 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 Yeah, that would be yeah. pretty fire. Great cross. I'll tell you this, the A-Dub doesn't have the, plot, the flavor that you expect from, or not that you expect, but that you hope from Sour Double. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because that high, to my physiology, is so unique. I, I love A-Dub. Is that still around? It. Yeah. Yeah? It, Diego, yeah. People need to cough that shit up. I don't think I've ever grown A-Dub. Well, in, in the era of Terps, you know, I, I don't think it'll ever be a huge strain. Yeah. But in the era of smoking flour and getting high, like, concentrate. Yeah. Not saying strength to strength, but that type of high that encompasses, you know, everything. Yeah. Uh, again, I was never the best at descriptions, but... Everybody who smoked a tub will tell you essentially the same thing. It, it's a very unique kind. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason they've kept it around this long, you know? I think last time I, I called it, it's like being high in a bubble. You know? <laughs> yeah. You it until you finally get out of it. <laughs> um, so there was one when I was going through the, the strain list, Purple Joy. Did that come via Ape? No, that was something that uh, Spicoli, Sean Crump, uh, sourced, I believe. But he did give it to Ape, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's the kind of purple plant I'm talking about, man. Uh, that was a heavy smoking, like, you knew you smoked pot after a joint of that. Like, yeah. You, However, you let your lungs breathe for a while, and you just sit back and enjoy that uh, 
that indica on it. I wonder if he got that from um, Breed Bay, Sean Cron. I'll have to ask him because they were selling that a strain called that at the same time, but it was some really weird like genetics that I had never heard of at the time. It wasn't anything. I want to say it was a Nepalese of some sort, but I, I I don't know if it's even the same shit. I just remember grabbing it from Ape. You know, I seem to remember from the photos, and I just saw photos last week when I was going through. Uh, it did have a... Sean posted some photos from way back in the day when he grew it outdoor, and it had a... It had a different structure. It was yeah. not... You know, the leaf structure was different. The, the branching was a little different. And I've seen Nepali plants in pictures, and pictures yeah. only, always seem to have that leafier, that same. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was some sort of, of Nepali in there. I, I, I'm sure Sean remembers. You got to get yeah. him on. Going. Yeah, eventually we got to get him on. Um, So... One one interesting part, I think that would be, uh, I know we talked a little bit about the beginning of Gorilla Glue, but going more in depth to it, how it was hyped, why it was hyped, how it became as famous as it was, was it pre-planned? Was it uh, accidental? It, was, it wasn't really pre-planned, but there were people who hit Josie up and were like, this is what, you know, Cookies had art was already in full on hype mode. Yeah. I wasn't even, I wasn't even aware of Instagram at, at that time. Yeah. That doesn't mean a lot, but I, just to put it in perspective. Um, and there was a guy, Sunset Limited, maybe, okay. I believe what his name was. Um before we ran his ass out. <laughs> he said, don't, don't ever come back here, scumbag. <laughs> he, I think he helped Josie a, a lot with advice. And it was, again, it was all right there on the thread. I'm still, I'm still catching up to that point in my, yeah. in my reading. Um, maybe we'll talk about that another time and I'll have more details fresh, fresh in mind. Yeah. But it there was in some sense a following of the cookie blueprint for for hyping a strain up. You could see why. I mean yeah. it didn't get hyped up. I mean it's still hyped up. Yep. You know, and there's gotta be a reason. Yeah. To, to, there's gotta be a reason to last that long, not not to get hyped up first. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I like Gorilla Glue. I like smoking it. I like that. What, the one thing I, I noticed with it, I, I avoided growing it for a long time because I was like, who the fuck wants this polyhybrid mess? You know, like, this isn't where I want to take any breeding, but it actually breeds just like it looks. Like, it it's not all, all over the place. It actually breeds like it looks and uh, passes on a lot of its best traits, which, which always surprised me with, with all the crap crammed in it. Yeah, it's... uh. It's it's been on a wild ride, you know. Yeah. It's in a, and there's a lot of poly hybrids with it in it that I enjoy more than Gorilla Glue, which is the whole point of poly hybrids, you yeah. know. Yep. Did you ever get to try any of the uh, GG1, GG5, any of those? Uh, you know, I, I got to smoke some of it somewhere. Uh, not enough. Not enough to make any judgments. Versus number four, uh, you know that's why when I was getting invited to to judge in you know certain events, I always said no because you know I don't really know a strain until I've smoked like I don't know I figure I got to smoke a half ounce over oh, over, yeah. over a month before I can even make judgments on strains. So I remember getting high off of the. I believe it was, uh, I think it was the number five, the, yeah. you know, you had to sign the contract or, or whatever that was. That was number five, right? Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, 
I remember being high, but I, I just, I don't have enough info to pass on any wisdom. But isn't that, that is the hard part about judging. Even, even when we do our meetups in the, in the mountains and shit, it's like everybody dumps all this new shit that a lot of us haven't tried, like on the table and we're trying to smoke it all within two days. And it's just not fucking happening to where you can really pin down anything special. And there's, there's people who can do it. You know, there's people who can smoke in one session four different kinds of flour and just pop off and reel off their comments and, and you can tell they're not faking, you know, yeah. Yeah. They, they work like that. I'm one of the guys I, I got to, you know, I got to know, I got to know it for a little while. Before I can get it. Yeah. With me, strains hit me different at different times of the day. If I'm in a different mood, like it hits me all kinds of different ways. So for sure, I, I, I get that. All right, let's talk Master Kush. SoCal. SoCal Master. When did you first see it? I've always called it Dirty Bubba. It just reminded me of Bubba Kush crossed with Master with a number of possible master cushions. Yeah. You know, a lot of people still don't realize that master cush was a general term, you know, for, for a seed string or yeah. I don't even know it, seed strings. Yeah. Uh, but individuals can always be found in cush populations that just stand out and somebody found that one. And I think somebody hit Bubba with it because they grow very similar. It's so Bubba. It's so fucking Bubba. Yeah. Bubba with a uh, just a garbage reek, you know, finisher yeah. on top of that. That sweet, rotten smell yeah. of Master Kush or the Kim Gay Express Master Kush. I always thought it was pretty good. I like SoCal Master. I'd like to see it pop back up. I, you know, uh, I, I haven't seen it in a long time. I've got some seeds on the burner. Uh, it's the it's when I hit SoCal Master Kush uh, with Revs. I, I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. It's either Revs F3 Breeder Male of okay. Cindy Nightbird. Yeah. Or F4 Pollen, which I selected myself from five minutes. Yeah. Um, and even though it's not the ideal combination in my mind, it doesn't really matter because what I'm looking for is is that master kush. I've still got Cindy 99 seeds if I want Cindy 99. Yeah. But that's the only seeds I have uh, left with the SoCal master kush. I bet it'll kick through. That thing's so, it bred so dominant. Um I know who was it? It was Jim, Jimmy Nitz. Might have done some SoCal Master Kush S ones at some point. Did Zoolander? No, not Zoolander. Jimmy Nitz, uh, Pisces. I don't know if Zoolander did or not. Well, um, is it is that cut still around SoCal? I haven't seen it in a long time. Not from like a reliable source. I've seen cuts where that people call Master Kush. That look just like it, but I've never got my hands on it to be sure, you know. But yeah, did you cross SoCal Master Kush and Hog's Breath? Yes, yeah, SoCal Master OG and Hog's Breath. That was the Super Hog. Super Hog. Yeah, yeah. That was one of me and me and Jimbo's first uh, crosses in San Diego with the Hog's Breath crew. There was a cut floating around SoCal. We gave it to G. Uh, we call it. Uh, BHT's hogs breath. Yeah. Uh, BHT had told Dusty, you remember Dusty? Dusty <laughs> Bolt? Oh, yeah, Dusty Bolt. That's a Danimal. Yeah, Danimal. Yeah. They were yeah. on the trade, and BHT went up there and gave them what became known as BHT's hogs breath uh, because Dusty was pissed and just went on the warpath online. And just every chance he got was just smoking BHT over that. He was so pissed. You know how he could get. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Why, why, why was it called BHT? What, what, what cut was it? BHT thought it was Hog's Breath. Oh, but was he it the Super Hog? As Hog's Breath, and it was Hog's Breath crossed with SoCal Master. Yeah, yeah, Herbal. yeah. 
however that worked out. Yeah. Uh, that was a killer cut too, man. Yeah, that dude. was heavy rotation in San Diego. Uh, I'm pretty sure Protech would still chop off a fender in exchange for that BHT hog's breath if anybody's got it. I sent the last of the seeds down to Bitter. I don't remember if they popped or not, but I did find some of the old the old super hog in my collection. We don't have any proof that I think you sent me some seeds. I might have. And we don't have any proof that that was what that cut was, but everybody unanimously said that tastes like hog's breath. And so it got, also had the look right from the start. Purple leaves, it would get purple, and if, if the yep. leaves layered, the under the, the top of the leaf that was under would not turn purple, so you ended up with all these cross patterns on yeah, all weird the, imprints. Yeah, it was it was another dank strain that I wish hadn't disappeared because that was a great cut. You know, like when we made those, I, we made something like, I don't know, 15,000 seeds. So it was going out of Unified. And he was selling them for like, I don't know, it was like five bucks a seed or something silly or five bucks a pack. So they should have been flying around everywhere. But who knows where where they all ended up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's another one of those strands. That if there was that many seeds out there, I'm amazed there aren't more cuts. Right. With, with one of those two in its name. Yeah, and with with the way the name game goes, though, you know, it could be out there under some other stupid fucking name. The Super Hog wasn't that creative uh, in the end in itself. Strain names are not so easy anymore. No, you know? bro. They're hard. I hate naming shit now. I like when uh, cultural, other cultural ph phenomenons work their way into the cannabis seed name game, like... Uh, I remember when, or, or cut, you know, um, I remember when Game of Thrones was big. Everything was Khaleesi this, Khaleesi that. Yeah, yeah. You know, other shit like that. And that's when you know you're running out of names, you know? Yes, yes. Or or when you, you have uh, a string called Blue Cocky because you're just gross like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I didn't have this one on the list. But I remember talking to you, and you you um you had Cam D pretty early on in Southern California. And do you remember the sourcing on all that, and where it showed up, and when? Uh, I got that from uh, from Crazy. It, it was something we talked about openly online, right yeah. from the start. I don't mind, you know, saying where I got it from. I'm sure, he doesn't either. Uh, yeah. He got it from from Greg yeah. from Kim which I understand sometimes does bring <laughs> <laughs> questions into it. But in this case, from, from everything, it, it was crazy. Got the right cuts. He got that. Yeah. He got East or East at the same time. Yeah. Which I love both. Matter of fact, I, when I, I started growing those two cuts at the same time, and there was a few years there where that's what I smoked. You know, two bong rips of East Coast Sour Diesel followed by one of Chem D. I mean, I had it down pat. And <laughs> that's when I really started to notice what I've always said about Chem D because it's definitely in the in the GOAT debate as yeah. far as I'm concerned. For sure. Uh, is the fact that I still to this day have not built a tolerance to it. There is weed that I, that I love. That if I smoke so long, I just don't. It it just quits satisfying, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. whatever physiology I have. Um, but Kim D to this day is one of the most potent uh, cuts for me out there. It's yeah, perfect. It, it's like that no ceiling high that people talk about. Like it's the epitome of that. I watch. I've watched it wipe people out that smoke heavy, heavy. Heavy, yeah, yeah. That yeah, I, I, I was able to go sour diesel, which I guess is related to Chem D, according to Gabby. yeah, Chem ninety one via, via Chem ninety one. Sure, that's right, that's right. Um, East Coast sour diesel, that original East Coast sour diesel from the Chem family. 
uh, was the perfect example of I could smoke a lot of East Coast Sour Diesel. And I did uh, because I enjoyed the taste. But yeah. at any point in the smoking session, I follow up Sour Diesel with Chem D. It was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, right. Joking. I love that flavor. It's still the best yeah. sour. It's right there with Sour Double. Those are the two best sour plants, in my opinion. Yeah, I lots, have to agree. Lots of other good ones, but I'm just saying those two were both, you know, peak performance. Yeah, I, I, we were spoiled, bro. We had the we. I think we had the best sours down in San Diego, personally, via that well, route. Let's go sour diesel. That was all I needed, and then we had yeah. sour double. Yeah. Know? Why would you incorporate? At some point, you have to draw the line and say, okay, enough of this kind of plant. Let me grow some of these others I want to get to. And if you've got those two, you've got both of the types of sour that yeah. there are. Me, you got you got both. You got the peak of both. Like OG, there's many different OGs. Tons. Um, what's that? Tons of OGs. Tons. And OGs that I still remember, you know, to this day. Um, sour is the same way, but to me, there's two basic profiles. With OG, you got three or four basic profiles and then variations on that. I just smoked 92 OG for the first time. How was that and one? It's I'm, I'm blasted high right now, and I think I've taken three hits off of that bowl. Um, the, uh, the New Mexico process of drying and curing continues to fascinate me and elude me really maxing, but my buddy here, Uncle Fishstick, I got some of that 92, 92 OG from, I wasn't even sure it was OG when I opened the bag and by day three of being in the jar, I was like, okay, yeah, there yeah. it is. There it is. It's a, it's a dirty OG. I don't know if it's a cut or if it came from seed. It I came tried from to... a, there was a collective that 92 uh, came from specifically, that specific cut that they started calling 92. Okay. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's yeah. what I call dirty OGs, like Valley OG was. Yeah. It's not sweet Valley OG was, but it's, it's that dirt OG. You were one of the few uh, other dudes that grew resins cut of OG, right? Yeah, it was Rascal's cut. It was the same cut the that same. Rascal. Same, same, same. As far as I could tell. I mean, I grew yeah. up near part. We got the legit original Rascal cut. It's it's all on the thread because Rascal was pissed. We didn't know we weren't supposed to have I remember, it. I remember all that shit, and I remember how it came down. I remember when uh, this dude, Doug, had it. He had it before Rascal was really blasting it out big. And there was yeah. a whole bunch of drama on that. Yeah. Well, I guess there was a business deal or a business venture that was going to be formed between Rascal, Wick 650. Yeah. And another dude who's still around. Yeah. You know, Wick anymore. Um, another dude who's still around. So I won't say his name, but they were going to do a business venture. I guess it fell apart. And Wick and the other dude got, got pissed. And, Wick gave his cut out to a few people, among them Sean. Yeah. After some back and forth with Rascal, we just said, look, man, we won't, we won't, I won't make seeds with it. We won't sell seeds with it. You know, he's yeah. like, all right, glad you guys got it. And he was cool about it. Yeah. Uh, and that was a great cut. That was a, that was a hydro OG cut. You yes. know, some of them grow in hydro. And they are head and shoulders above everything else. Everything else. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, hydro cut. And a few years later, when I ran resin cut, resin's cut, me and the guy I was growing with at the time, we both, as soon as we could smell it, you know, we're like, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. just yeah. the last yeah. hydro spray I ever ran was, was Maui Skunk Dog and Resin's OG. And let me tell you, that was the stinkiest table. I in the bet, room. dude. Yeah. Yeah. The Dresden's cut is definitely meant to be run hydro. <laughs> he actually gave us the recipe that they used to use when they do like the Cholo mansions, blowing up hydro tables and shit. And it, it was like some, I want to say jacks or something like that, or some, some hard, hard nutrient line. 
I just used RO water and Canna. Yeah, Canna. That's what. I, that's my fallback too. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. You know, I have. Well, hydro is still hydro. You still got to control everything. Exactly. But I'm. I don't. I don't. I don't measure ppm. I don't measure pH. I just same. <laughs> Not at this point. Not this far in. It's so good. All right, day wrecker. Day wrecker. Day wrecker diesel, which was never really that diesel-y to me. No, to me it was more like a Chem 91 OG hybrid somewhere right in the middle. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Not quite as sweet as OG, <laughs> but... Uh, exactly. Grotech and I did a project. We uh, He reversed the Chem 91 and hit... I gave him Chem 91, Chem D, and Rascal's Cut. Yeah. Which, yeah, we made seeds, but we did not sell any seeds. And this yeah, wasn't yeah. this was thousands upon thousands of seeds anyway. Um, matter of fact, those seeds got stolen after. Um, he had end the day record diesel. So Chem D, Rascal, and original diesel got hit with Chem 91 reverse pollen. Yeah. Um, and that Chem 91 was definitely legit. That came from money. Yeah. From money. money Mike. And uh, we talked about that openly on the thread. So I don't think he'll mind that being known. Um, and that we called that super record, the, uh, the original, the, the day record cross with Chem 91, we called super record. And that's, I've got some pics of that up on my Instagram too. That's, some of the uh, gooeyest, just most frost covered flower ever. I still have some seeds, but I'm zero for the last six, waiting for the next step in seed cracking science technology. Yeah. Because there's some, uh, a friend of mine had an eight uh, in a bag. He was taking it home. Maybe it was a quarter. It was a quarter, a uh, quarter ounce. Yeah. And he had to go through the checkpoint and they, they went through every surface of his vehicle after he showed him, there's the quarter ounce. They're like, there's no way that's all we have. <laughs> this vehicle. There's no way. And they, they tore into it. They didn't tear into it, but they, they searched yeah. every place you could put weed without tools. And, and dude kept telling man, this is it. I tell you, you know, I'm not dumb enough. Yeah. To more than this through a through a border checkpoint. Was it like miles. the Arizona checkpoint? No, it was just one of the many in North County. Gotcha. Yeah. Or, or southern and, and they're not border checkpoints, you know. No. We all know the ag they're checkpoints. Like, they're what? The agricultural checkpoints? Well, they're drug interdiction checkpoints. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, why are you doing immigration 80 miles north of the border? You yeah. know, it's too yeah. late. Yeah, that's one I would have liked to have tried. I, I'm a big fan of Day Wrecker as it is. And with Chem 91 on that, that would be fire. That would be super fire. Lots of potential. Chem 91 makes some killer crosses. A lot of the offspring, I find Chem 91 to be pretty poor. I mean, not the high. The high is it's Chem I. Sure. You know. But I think it's a rather boring plant. Dang. I think it's kind of ugly, too, on its own. <laughs> not too pretty, not too, yeah. But in it, hybrids, it, awesome. It's ugly. Yeah. All right, Sensi Star. What's your first experience with Sensi Star? Uh, you know, that's one of the few strains I've tried from uh, from a dispensary in, yeah. you know, California. It was one of the earliest ones in dispensaries that I remember. Like when dispensaries started popping up, Sensi Star was one of the first, the, the bud being sold. It was cool to, uh, you know, we had all seen the Canna Bible. Yeah. Uh, I, don't think, I don't even think Rosenthal's books were out yet. Um, but we'd all seen the Canna Bible. So it was really cool to go to a dispensary and, and buy some pot that I had never grown or, or smoked. And just match it up with 
with what we saw or the beginnings of the online. Sure. You know. uh, that was pretty cool. And I remember enjoying Sense and Star. I remember it being a uh, uh, solid high, you yeah. know, having that really light, sugary sweetness, you know. Yeah. But I, I like the sweet cannabis tones in general. I don't know what turp profiles those are, any of that shit, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the sweetness comes through. And I thought it matched up pretty good with the description in the sequel. Yeah. 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 That was actually, by the time it got released, uh, it made it over here in, uh, Luke had released it in, in fem seed form. It was pretty uniform too, even from the, even from the seed pack. So the the kind of sensey star they had on the east coast would match up a lot with what was going on on the west coast very very uh, consistent here's a good one for you i know you can wax poetic about the shram i like the shram man i really did you know i got excited when a friend of mine got that cut back recently and i started thinking about potential seed making projects immediately just got excited and uh that excitement tempered a little bit um, as far as the seed making goes. Yeah. Because when I think Colombian, I believe that's Colombian. Uh, Colombian Rom Romulan. Colombian Romulan. Yeah. Uh, the little bit ex of experience I have with different Colombian genetics, man, you, you never know what you're going to get. Right. With yeah. So I, and I realize that there's nothing scientific about that conclusion, but in my decision-making process, that's the conclusion I use. Uh, but as far as smoking, I, I really liked it. That was, that's the, and I know it's it's an old stereotype of that strain, but that is the most Nag Champa incense light strain. Yeah. That I, the way it smells while it's growing, that's what it smells like. It smells like that when you're smoking it, and it smells like that in the room after you're done smoking it. You know? And does the person still have it that you were talking to? They still rocking I believe, it? I don't know if they've flowered it yet, but supposedly they have it. That'd be cool. That'd be cool to see. My DMs to remind myself of which person that was. Yeah, <laughs> I hate when that fucking happens, bro. Hate yeah. it. Oh, I know who it was, yeah. Um, I'm sure they'll give it a good run and test. And I don't think it's on any kind of lockdown or anything. Yeah, I doubt it because so few people know what it is to even know to want it anymore. Well, actually, I remember shrooming. Oof, yeah. Uh, probably picking people when he released that guy. But uh, it got passed around. A number yeah. of people. First time I grew it, I actually killed it off at like day 25. I was like, look, I'm just going to start again because I did not plan. I had never grown a plant that stretched like that. Yeah. People never have grown a plant that, that stretches that much. Yeah. And I was in a closet at the time. I didn't even have a tent. I was in a, yeah. And she just, she took off. I mean, beyond even tying over the space between, I'm like, okay. I know what I did wrong. I mean, I flowered her at like two feet tall in the closet. Yeah. Seven feet tall in yeah, I bet. three weeks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I grew her for a while. Uh, the bud structure always annoyed me a little bit. You know, I, it was not a it was not a yielder weight wise. You'd have yeah. a plant. Yeah. That, that's I finally got her put out. And it's like, geez. But since I have acquired uh, a taste for for dry sift hash and making my own hash, yeah, that that's what I'm really excited to do. I can only imagine how good that hash would be, and, and we'll see. We'll see if he flowers or earns it. I'm definitely gonna get my hands on. So real quick, like kind of as an aside, when you talk about dry sift hash. Do you, would you prefer the profile of the resin to be more greasy or more like sandy for doing dry sift hash? 100%. 100%. Yeah. 
not because of the quality of hash, just for the sake of keeping your screens fucking clean, man. <laughs> yeah. Difference when you're when you're dry sifting. Yeah. Uh, I've got some strains that uh, that I've sifted a few times. It's like, man, I just I, I don't want to dry sift this shit anymore. The hash is amazing. Yeah. It's actually it's actually uh, Trop Cherries by Relentless. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't expect the resins to be that gooey because of the way they grow on the plant. Yeah. Uh, the way they even look on the flowers and the, and the leaf material. Uh, but they are gooey when they go through that screen, man. Uh, but the hashes from that stuff is, is awesome. Oh, I bet. I know it's a big hit because of that. People love that chopped cherry hash. Well, I just, I was reading uh, Fletcher argue with somebody about how Tropicana Cherries was just a, a lower remake of the Tange hit with, I, I don't even remember what the argument was about, but I thought he was short shrifting Tropicana Cherries a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I've always wondered how you get cherry on top of orange because orange is usually so dominant i mean it's a hard pick well the the cut that that i have now uh, i haven't grown it yet but i've seen it being grown yeah for the last three and a half years by my buddy here so i've been making that that leaf um it's more orange than than it is cherry is it okay that makes yeah. sense uh, but in the hash, once you sift it, like it's almost like it's almost like the orange turps don't make the final screen for the hash, mm -hmm. but the cherry do, and it comes out very much smelling like cherry pie tobacco. Is it is it a cherry pie cross? The drop cherries? I don't think so. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like. Uh, it doesn't seem like cherry pie to me at all. I actually like cherry pie. I ran that for, for a little while. Yeah, I did too. Um, it's a little closer to... Didn't uh, didn't CSI do a cherry pie Kim D cross? I'm one sure I did. One? Yeah. That would be a nice combination. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. I liked, I've always liked cherry pie quite a bit. So I guess Trop... Trop Cherries is, uh, I just went, looked at Relentless's site. It's the Tropicana Cookies, which was, uh, I don't know, Tangy Cookies, <laughs> crossed with Cherry Cookies F3, which I don't know much about their their Cherry Cookies or what made the cherry or whatever, but it, it's a gorgeous cut. It's a gorgeous cut. I like Relentless a lot, too. Really cool dudes. Yeah, I've been rooting for him. Any of the guys that came up on the forums, you know, who yeah, got their same. Or even were were already in their early years when they were on the forums. Yeah. I've always really cool. They tend to have a different attitude too. Like <laughs> I don't know why. I've always gotten along with him real well. And it's just uh it's one of those things where, you know, you just kind of get where each other came from. What kind of bullshit what, what kind of bullshit each other put up with to get here. Well, and Fishstick, Uncle Fishstick from the forums, he's easier. Uh he also has a cherry cookies cut that is actually that is a pretty insane cut. Like that was when when he started growing that and I got some of that. That was the first time I've been here in Las Cruces and found something that I mean, oops, I smoked a little too much that time. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised, you know, it took me off guard. I've had I've had a number of cookies crosses that I like smoking, you know. Sure. Um, but that one, he's also got a cut of what's the Kim D? Isn't uh, what's the Kim D GMO? Is that GMO. Kim D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah, it's a Kim D. I don't know if it's uh, Forum or Kim D or some kind of cookie Kim D. Yeah, it's uh. Speaking of New Mexico drying and curing, you know, that stuff I've got a sample of, and it's about uh, three weeks of curing now. And it, 
I mean, it just stinks, man. Yeah, dude. You can tell there's Chem D in it just when you smell it. What's that? You can tell there's Chem D in it just when you smell it, like instantly. I it's, I kind of milked that that jar a little bit, you know. Yeah, it's it's uh, good. But the the ninety two OG potency wise, mm-hmm. uh, it it punches the GMO in the face. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's one of those it's one of those OG cuts that I'm not sure I would want that to be my permanent OG cut. Yeah, because it's a heavy hit high. Yeah. Like I, I wish I had smoked the last of that GMO now instead of the ninety two OG before this show because I'm still I'm like ready to fall out here, you know. <laughs> oh, speaking of OG, did you ever get to try the Tokyo OG when you were in San Diego? No, I remember that dispensary. Point Loma. There were people talking about the Tokyo OG. Yeah. At first there was the usual, you know, bitching and moaning and it's a rename this. It's a yeah, yeah. Um, and that happened with every single OG that popped up. Sure. You know, for yeah. I'm on the uh, but it was around for a while. I mean, there's some fucking cool. fire. It was yeah. fucking fire. Yeah. No, no OG Kush. Yeah. Uh, who were big on that on the Tokyo OG. The first time I, I smoked it, I couldn't drive home, bro. I couldn't drive home. I had to give someone my keys. And that's when I was like, fuck, this is strong. I, you know, like I, I figured any other fucking OG, but it was strong. Like, it, it, something else to it. The variety that has come from the what I assume are all S1 seeds, or not all, but... Yeah, for uh, the most part, yeah, bag seeds. I mean, just the quality. I've got... Okay, so... Resin lung, in addition to that cut, he gave me two big vials of seeds. It's got to be, yeah. I don't know, a thousand OG seeds that were just Jesus. taken out. His crew was moving. Yeah. And they were just selected. He's even got the two guys' name on the bottle. Oh, yeah. Uh, from, I think, oh, I, I think it's dated 04 through 08. Yeah. So it took a bunch of bag seeds from the big, you know. Because they didn't want the, the seeds going out. They were picking them out. Yeah. 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 And uh, I'm I'm over probably 200 on those ones. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, I always just occasionally get it. It'll come back to bite me, though, because, you know, I like to pop five at a time in my current setup. Yeah. Five at a time. Uh, and I'll drop those in now, like 30 or 40 of them. <laughs> One day you're going to get 40. <laughs> One day I'm going to get like 85% germination. And how could you let any of that shit go? Yeah, you know? You couldn't. Absolutely couldn't. I've got a bunch of old seeds that I want to pop right now. The, the, the problem is having, having room. Having room and viability. I mean, I like I told you the story about uh, Grayskull sent me the last of the bull rider seeds that he had. I think they were from Jerbo, one of the guys. And um, I had a person that I thought was going to be able to to crack them by tissue culture. And that dude ended up being a, not able to do it. And so I sent him back to Grayskull. And I don't know if he ever found anyone for it, but those would be worth it to, to try to crack, you know? Let me... Some of those, I don't know if it was at the same time or maybe it was one you sent back to them. I'm not sure. I had zero luck. I even tried the seed cracker on a couple yeah. of them. Uh, I tried putting some in straight dirt uh, and made sure that, you know, they didn't get, I mean, like three times a day, just making sure it wasn't packed too hard above the seeds. Yeah. Uh, zero luck. Yeah. You know, I always wondered if Old Betsy was selfed, if you could go through that population and find something more similar to Bull Rider than Old Betsy itself, if they're truly related. And you got to check out those pictures Chandron has up of the new Afghan Bull Rider. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen him. The look to it that's very similar to Bull Rider. Oh, like you could all. You can tell just by looking at the buds between bull rider and Afghani bull rider. You you 
pick each one of them out immediately. And uh, from what I've seen of the live plants that Sean posted, uh, it, it's definitely a full rider leaner. Interesting. I don't even know if he's smoked it. I, I don't know if he's finished harvesting. I'll hit him up. Yeah, hit him up and find out. I'm interested. All right. Super Silver Haze. I know we covered some of this about um, where the cut came from, the uh, the different nomenclature of it, whether it was the 98 cup winning cut, uh, whether it wasn't. Can you talk a little bit about what you've seen in the breeding that you've done with it? You know, I went back because a number of people hit me up about it after the last show. Yeah. What we did, and I went back and looked on my Instagram and my where where I was posting about it as I was growing it and as I was curing it and there's there's more info in those five or six posts than than what I even went over on the show last time. Yeah. Uh the thing that comes up if you look at the six of my last seven flower posts have been uh three different types of plant that I've seen that a number of people have seen, you know, come from those. And yeah. the one thing that came up, I noticed a lot was limey. I forgot how limey those things were, especially one in particular, the last run. Um, on my Instagram, I described it as limey, as a, or limey Jack Herrera. Okay, yeah. It really reminded me. Jack Herrera is actually one of, uh, I think when we were talking about Sensi Star, I mentioned getting a strain from a dispensary. And trusting that that was it, Jack Herrera was one of the first ones I got, and yeah. I love. I look for a Jack Herrera cut as much as I enjoyed that first uh, Jack experience that I had in the dispensary. Um, and the primary difference between the classic Jack Herrera and the SSH to me uh, was the flavor. It was yeah. a little more. Uh, with the SSH, uh, and that comes across uh, in that last run I did of three different plants. One I described as limey, one was lemony, and then one was the beardo, which was just pissed off and looked unhappy the whole time. And, uh, you could tell, you could tell that the was one of the two hazes in SSH. Yeah, uh, coming through in seeds. Uh, I described it last time as 90s seed catalog stock photo of a 90s haze hybrid. Yeah. Uh, it was very typical of the pictures from back then. I guess that was actually the, the, the 2000s, really. No, that was the 90s, too. Yeah. Um, but she's very dominant in the one cross I've made. Yeah. I mean, if, if you like SSH, you'll like everything that comes from this plant, uh, from this cross. Uh, and that's the one we have labeled uh, SSSDH on the uh, on site, on Riot Seeds, right? Yeah. It, uh, it's definitely the non-haze leaners. The haze leaners are obvious from what I've been told from the other growers who have grown it, what I've seen pictures of, what I've grown here myself. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, number one, they don't like small containers for their roots. Yeah. They want a bigger container. The SSH is, the SSH leaners are very much, uh, classic indoor grow. You can grow this much from this much, almost hydro properties when it comes to the plant you're going to get. I grew them in three gallon containers. They were, you know, four feet tall. Yeah. Uh, Big yielders, as you would expect, because that's pure SSH right there. That's, Absolutely. Um, but the hazy pinos, which I really got a kick out of, uh, they want the bigger, <laughs> the bigger pots. I'll let you know. Yeah, uh, the sound comes through in the high, uh, much more body than the SSH leaders. Yeah, they, I mean. They have the same look. When you look at the SSH mom, you don't think pure sativa by any stretch of the imagination. 
uh, because it's just too good of a the, the buds are thick and yeah the branches are fully loaded uh, but from the taste and the smell you definitely get the sativa impression yeah uh, but don't you it'll it'll kick you it'll kick you in the stomach you know it's yeah. definitely um, Sounds like an and, ideal, the ideal hybrid using uh, super silver haze and the sour dub. You know, you get lucky in that way. Like I said on the first show, pretty much the only thing I said on the first show was it wasn't what I was looking for, and that's just because it doesn't resemble anything to do with sour double, except a sweetness, uh, a heightness in her heightening. And improving the sweetness of SSH because yeah. the SSH is that cedar overbite, you know, yeah, a uh, little bit acrid, but the sour double smooths that out, makes it a little sweeter, and it gives it a better high, or at least a, a, a more balanced. Everybody loved that SSH high, you know, yeah. that high right between indica and sativa. For me, it just wasn't potent enough. You know, I yeah. think I used of how many how much we had to smoke to get through a Raiders game <laughs> uh, you had to smoke a lot you know yeah uh, that was the only downside but it tastes so good that you know like sour double or east coast sour diesel you just keep smoking yeah I can imagine stuff. that lip smacking translate like how with the sour translating on on top of that uh SSH would be really freaking nice yeah, and that's not to say that won't pop up. I got a 50 seed grow going with KRD. Yeah, out, I don't know where he's going, Long Beach, wherever up there in Southern California, and maybe he will find more of that sour influence. Yeah, but it's definitely something. If if, if I were to describe it, I would say you're going to get the SSH experience. And yeah, you're get on it. You know, a lot of the younger generation are not as hip to the SSH, and, and I'm sure a lot are interested in it. So it's a great place for them to start, you know, as opposed to trying to hunt through, you know, 30 seeds of fucking super silver haze to try to find one keeper. You know, and if you're new, you know, if you're new to smoking, if you came around after the SSHs and the Neville's haze, this is a good plant because it's got all the potency that any of the yeah. Any newfangled stuff has. I mean, it's an ass kicker for sure. Um, so you're not going to a pure SSH experience at all. You're gonna you're still gonna get all the body that you need. How long is the flowering time on average, do you think uh people are gonna find there? All the SSH leaners I've flowered, I've flowered for sixty eight to seventy days. Yeah. Depending on uh the haze leaners. I took mine to uh, 85 this last time, and it probably could be another week. Yeah, but it was it was sativa, you know. Yeah. It was hate. Um, yeah. It had one of the interesting things about that plant that I'd forgotten about was when I had it. I had it in the tub, you know, finishing up drying, burping, and when I would open it, the the aroma was movie theater popcorn butter. Oh, wow. I did not expect at all. Uh, no. But when you put an individual flower and held it to your nose, gave it a little squeeze, it was it was like sweet tarts. It was super sharp. Oh, wow. Flavor. It's one of the weirdest is that a dichotomy. Yeah, yeah. Weirdest situations. And, and post-cure, it lost the, the movie theater butter popcorn smell. Yeah. It just sweetness but didn't taste like ssh at all didn't look like ssh it looked like a very dense small um haze yeah hybrid, you know a lot of different haze hybrids out there a lot of range in that term yeah and these dense smaller flowers that were everywhere it yielded huge i smoked that cut and i cut alone for Almost six months. <laughs> I really went full on. That was my first real experience with the sativa. 
but even though it's not a pure sativa by yeah. genetic by by breeding by lineage it was it was it was haze man and it was my first real experience with that yeah i remember talking to you during it and how your how your uh, opinion changed over time You're like you know i kind of like this fucking shit you know yeah yeah i did a complete 180 uh yeah you I've did it over the course of a year you know some yeah some worked hash um and again, cure is nothing new to any of us, but it's still something that can amaze me to this day. Absolutely. You know, cure. Matter of fact, I still got some of that. It's dry as hell, but I still have some of that. You know, when when people talk about making live resin hash and like doing that without curing the plant, how does that how does that hit you? Like, does that sound advisable? Would you be hash- something like that? You're hashing for terpenes. Is that all that's it is? A, I mean, when they advertise it, that, that's, I mean, the high is, no way is the high going to be better. Yeah. If I have the term correct, any live resin, live rosin, any live resin hashish, that just means they cut the plant down, trimmed it, and threw it in the freezer, right? And yeah. then hashed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not dogging it. Hell, dude, fucking rosin changed a whole lot the first time I ever smoked. Um, But, yeah, no, it's not going to have the same properties. There are so many chemical processes that we still have, that scientists still have not looked into. Yeah. Within, uh, not to mention what happens when you completely compress and mix those chem- those chemicals and then let them form into into a third chemical compound. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a lot left. But I don't personally there is no concentrate that I don't like. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean I, it's I have the same problem, yeah. <laughs> um, but to me the solventless uh cured hashish is just my personal favorite. Uh, I remember the first time keeping track of curing the flowers that I harvested and yeah. doing it and, and burping it in the beginning, having them in glass jars. The first few times, I mean, it 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 really blows your mind the first time you do it. Yeah. And some strains are more dependent on it than others. Rev Cindy 99 is probably the most cure dependent strain I've ever seen because what goes into those jars after harvest is so heavy smelling. It almost makes me nauseous. Yeah. And what comes four to six weeks later is that sweet white airy that you expect from a Cindy 99. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm a big fan of curing before making hash, hashish, concentrates, any yeah. of that. But again, you're talking about cannabis concentrates, so it's still going to get you higher than any <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for six months. Yeah, I was just I was thinking about that because people were asking me about doing uh, concentrates with my blueberry, and realistically, blueberry, the type that we've made and worked on, it takes a good month for it to fully form back in. Because once you chop it down, a lot of that that super berry smell dissipates. And as you cure it, it comes back full force, like tenfold. But people were talking about making live rosin with it. And I was just like, I don't, I don't know how that's gonna do any fate, you know, favors for you if you're chasing blueberry, you know. Well, again, that's what we say. It's strain dependent. You know, I would say yeah. that there's plants that smell that the way they smell at the end of harvest mm-hmm. is preferable in some you know, fine points here and there to the cured smell. You know, there's yeah. there's some they're out there. When I say they're they're pressing for turps, I mean that's what I assume because I've never heard the argument that fresh resin is more potent. Yeah. Than right. Cured. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm assuming that when they do the live, they're doing a particular strain. Yeah. I remember strawberry cream was that way. That was that was another one where it was like instantly the way it smelled at cure or, or, or right at dry was super strawberry. You really didn't get much more strawberry as it cured. 
So it probably would be good for something like that in that sense, but I don't know how the high would translate for sure. No, and when you're pressing, meaning what I assume to be heat, you know, rosin, yeah. uh, you're getting all the terpenes that are on that plant at the yeah. time of. Um, when you do dry sift, for example, or bubble hash, my two favorite ways of, of, of hashing, uh, you've got different size screens. So yeah. in a lot of cases, like bubble, people who make bubble hash, they keep a lot of different grades. They keep anywhere from two to five grades for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, the reasons are they're all different. You know, you, you can go within the sizes that made it through each screen and you can assume, uh, especially as you, as you get smaller, that everything going through that screen is one kind of trichome or trichome stock yeah. or to some plants have different size trichomes, you know? So when, you, when I do dry sift, the, the trop cherries is a good example. If you get that as flower, you're going to, you're going to be hit with that, that citrus orange smell right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, flower. But for whatever reason, I only keep, hash that's been worked on 220 lines per inch. Whatever's yeah. left top of the 220 LPI, which is 75 microns approximately, whatever's left on top of that 220 LPI screen, that's what my hash is. I don't even keep any of the other ones. Doesn't mean they're not good. Doesn't mean they're not potent. It's just that's that's the hashish. Everything else is yeah. something that didn't um, so when I screen the Tropicana cherries, wherever those, whatever those orange chirpings are at, wherever they're kept at, it doesn't make my 220 screen. It's either the, the, the pile below it or the pile that was left on top of the 110 that I used to get 220. That's interesting. So it comes cherry pipe tobacco smell and no citrus at all. I never even realized or came to the conclusion that it could do that, but that makes total sense as you explain it. That's kind of stream of consciousness overall because I, I'm still learning how it's going, but that's that's a really good example. So, for example, the the blueberry nine, yeah, the <laughs> blueberry nine, yeah, I come out uh, extremely blueberry either at time of harvest or a month down the road or maintain it the whole time. That doesn't mean that blueberry terpene will make it into into the hatch. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it all depends. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. Well, the second oldest form of cannabis behind growing the plant itself uh, is still the most unexplained, and, and that's you know dry sift hashish. Yeah, it's still unexplained form, unexplored scientifically form of cannabis yeah well we're about an hour and 20 in so i think uh let's see is there anything else you wanted to get in in this episode because we're going to do some more uh the san diego's cuts uh, i don't know that we ever talked about j1 no no let's hit up j1 huh? what's that no we haven't touched on j1 yet Get you back there. I had a phone call coming in. Oh, there you go. You're here. I had a phone call coming in. Sorry about that. You're good. So day um, one. J one. So we didn't we didn't touch on that last time. Mm -mm. That was a wicked strain uh, for for bag appeal. It's one of the best I've ever seen. Uh, to our knowledge, it's uh, Jack Herrera, skunk number one. Uh, yeah, uh, was brought back from Amsterdam. What my source thinks is the 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 ninety percent solid story of it. Yeah, he brought it. He gave it to me. It was interesting because the forums were getting going, and me and this guy had already been in touch. He's a friend of. He was a friend of Reps. He, he's passed on now. Yeah, uh, Mountain or Noib from. Uh, the Cabana or Skunk Magazine. 
Okay. Um, old timer, buddies with Rev. He hit me up. He was the one who got me all of Rev's seeds, uh, pollen from his breeders program. Yeah. He, he was the intermediary between me and the Rev. Um, he had this cut. The forums were getting going, and he had an interesting idea. He wanted to bring J1. He was up in Shasta. Uh, okay. Shasta. He brought it down to San Diego, and he wanted to see online how fast it would take for that cut to spread. Yeah. Just just because the internet was new to us old times. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, yeah. Like, we already had the cuts thread going. already had the seeds thread going. Let's just see what happened. So we gave it to G. Uh, I think he was working with Shan at the time. I think that, that yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, and he gave it out, and we gave him lots of cuts that he grew into a number of mothers. So it spread fast, and you literally could watch it in the forums as it made its way back up north. And within the first two months, there are already two bullshit origin stories out there. <laughs> yeah. You know? But it was, it grew so Jack Herrera like. Yeah. Uh, but even more coated with resin than the best pictures of Jack Herrera they ever showed. I mean, it was just coated. Uh, it smelled like uh, yellow Gatorade to me. Like oh, wow. Expressed as yellow Gatorade. Yeah. Uh, but the, the potency factor wasn't really keeping up with everything else that was around. I mean, it's a nice. It was a nice daytime smoke, but it uh, it went through the circles down there in San Diego pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I, but it was I, fun to watch. I remember there was a collective in um, San Diego called BCC. It was downtown Broadway, in between Seventh and Eighth on Broadway, and they would sell the the whatever the worst bud that they had at the time. They would label J one. And they would sell it as J1. How fucked up is that? that is, <laughs> that, give it a bad rap, you know? Yeah, dude, it's the worst. They, they were a bunch of yuppies anyway, so it figures, right? Yeah. It was a nice combo of those 90s Amsterdam. Yeah. Genetic. Yeah, it makes sense. I crossed it to, uh, matter of fact, the same guy got me some Iron Cindy pollen. Yeah. Rev, uh, and I hit that and made F1 J1 cross with Iron Cindy, and then some of those seats made their way to a user. His username was You Are Average, uh, <laughs> with a U and an yeah. R. Uh, average, and he made both F2s and F3s, and made sure I got some of those seats back too. That's pretty cool. It'd be interesting because you throw that metal haze. I had some of the metal haze and some of the metal haze hybrids. Rev and, and Mountain are part of a group of growers in Northern California. Yeah. And each, each fall, I would get a box from Mountain, and it was like Iron Cindy, uh, Cherry Malawi, BR1948. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and combinations therein, uh, outdoor grown. By old heads, just I mean, like if if you were to put pot in a in a capsule to send to aliens, those are the guys you'd want growing it in that area of the country. It was just some of the best outdoor weed I've ever sampled. Yeah, and that phase puts puts a little oomph in anything that it was crossed with the Iron Cindy. I got lucky. Uh, um... I got I got his uh, metal haze cut early on, like the actual cut cut, and was able to grow it. It was it was definitely cool. Uh, made a lot of crosses with it early on. Rev Rev, he he's uh, a relic from the past, and and not enough of the the younger dudes know about him. But he's very like, influential. Day on Instagram because eight got some uh, red. Is it Russian rubber skunk or red 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 red, red Russian skunk? Red Russian skunk. Yeah. Uh, picked up a pack of those and I was like I, I don't understand why this guy has never had his time in in the 
you know, online world. You know, yeah. there's all over the world who know who he is with yeah. his soil and his genetics, but I don't understand. Everybody's always bitching. I want something that's different. Yeah, right. You know, using the same shit. Well, hit up Kingdom Organic Seeds because it's all different there. Every I bit think, of it. I think it's because he never dipped into OG Kush. He never dipped into any hype strains and crossed them into his stuff. So there was like no little middle ground for like people that wanted OG but wanted to try something different with OG. Like they just never got introduced to him that way. You had to be from a certain era to really get what he was doing and why he was doing it the way he was doing it. He says he has killer shit. At 70s and 80s weed. Yeah. No more. He used madness in the cross. That's right. That's right. But madness was not like the others. Madness was. You know, an Oregon Big Bud cross. It was from the era before P91. Yeah. And all that, uh, which is probably why he liked it. Yeah, it would make sense. Yeah, yeah. shout out Rev. He deserves it. Well, I guess I guess we can call this one an episode. Is there anything else you want to get in on this one? Because we're going to probably do a few more anyways. Yeah, no, I made notes, but they're all in my phone, so. <laughs> Next time, we'll teach you how to hook up your phone to your printer to print them out. What's and a I'll... printer? Yeah, what's that shit? <laughs> but yeah, um, go check out go check out Rob Seeds, uh, riotseeds.com has some. We still have some more of the Skank Dog. I've got to put a bunch back in stock that people didn't pay for. We have the uh, SSSDH, which was the S the Super Silver Haze Sour Dub that we were talking about. Um, anyone you want to shout out? Yeah. I was supposed to wear this tonight for my buddies, my buddy Saba, but yeah. unfortunately it's a snapback, and they just don't make snapbacks with gigantic fucking heads like me. <laughs> He's a local artist here. He's got a shop. He does some fucking badass t-shirts. Uh, I love, he does the t-shirt and the hat, Southwest, like North Face, go fuck yourself. Yeah, 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 I love it. Definitely got some cool shit. Check his, check him out online at Saba on Instagram. Right. A- anybody else? No, that's my first oh, shout out. Yeah, this is your first shout out, huh? All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me, and this is going to be the one of many, I'm sure. I probably won't remember much of it. Okay. <laughs> Fucking OG. Killed, killed me. Well, <laughs> I smoked some ash before that. I probably didn't know. <laughs> well, it's all good. We did good. We got, actually got a lot more in than I thought we would, so... Uh, you know what we did forget, so next time is we can... I, I'd like to get into that duddy. Oh, yeah, because that was all logged. Yeah. yeah. Dude, and literally, I'm going through the threads, and I, I see, okay, here, I made a post right here, and the post is, so, what's this I hear about double half the plant is shit, and the other half is perfectly fine? Yeah, it, it was so ridiculous and stupid at the time, um, and, and I'm still as far as I got. We're like just starting to work our way through the through the confusion, and TMV came back up right away. You know, of course, uh, which was a lot more credible when plants started dudding. Yeah, um, but I assume what we were all calling dudding. It was the HPLV or HLV. I talked with Tumi Organics, and if, if I remember correctly, they did say that Patient Zero was Sour Dub. Like, that's the... But that's zero. what it is, that if you have HPLVD, eventually your plants are going to start dudding, correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. Yeah, because it, it was... Uh, it took over the San Diego... I mean, we can go into this next oh, time. yeah. Yeah, no, it's just a little taste of it so people know what to expect next time. There you go, yeah. Yeah. All right, brother. Because well, that for... wiped a lot of people out. Yeah, it did. It fuck, fucked a lot of us up. That's what we get for trading. 
Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. If it worked its way through as fast as I remember it, then I find it hard to believe we're ever going to be rid of it. Yeah, no, it's 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 totaled uh, a lot of the libraries in Spain now. It got transported over there via cookies and all kinds of other shit. So yeah, it's it's still working its way around the world, just taking shit out. What a disaster! <laughs> all right, man. Well, I appreciate you, and uh, we'll have you back very soon. All right, man. All right, peace. Later. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon in our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.